Greetings, you are watching Recurse TV. My name is Ryan and today I'm going to walk you through installing Django on the Raspberry Pi. I'm hoping to make this tutorial into a series where I can show you how to build a basic web application using Django. So what is Django? Well, Django is a web development framework that saves you time and makes web development a joy. Using Django, you can build and maintain high-quality web applications with minimal fuzz, and we are all going to do that on the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is a tiny computer with enough power to run a Django development server. So here, we're going to attempt installing and deploying our first Django project on the Raspberry Pi, and maybe develop a web application on later videos. You may be asking, why don't we just build a web application from scratch without a framework? Well, there will come a time when your application would be needing to connect to a database, and you would end up duplicating your database connecting code to other parts of your application. The practical way is to refactor it into a reusable function. Another problem you'll encounter is you have to remember to close your database every time and you will end up with a lot of boilerplate code that is prone to mistakes. Your application may not be reusable in a different environment because of some environment specific configuration. And lastly, if a web designer who has no experience in coding wants to redesign the page, he or she might crash the application because ideally the logic of the page or the retrieval of information from the database would be separate from the presentation, which is the HTML display of the page. These problems are precisely what a web framework intends to solve. I'm sure some of you are already familiar with the MVC design pattern or model view controller design pattern. For beginners, MVC like what I mentioned earlier is a Django architecture that separates the logic, the model and the controller from the presentation, the view. In Django, it's more like an MTV or model template view design pattern. Don't worry about that now. We'll get more into that later. In the meantime, let's go ahead and install Django on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I have here a freshly installed Raspbian, which is the official operating system of the Raspberry Pi. What we're going to do here is to open up a terminal and install virtual env, which stands for virtual environment. To put it simply, virtual environment is an isolated working copy of Python, which allows you to work on a specific project without worry of affecting other projects. So let's go ahead and install virtual env, but before we do that, let's update our package lists by typing sudo app get update. And when it's done updating, we can go ahead and type in sudo app get install virtual env. hit enter and in my computer my or my Raspberry Pi it's already been installed now that we have our virtual environment installed we can now create our virtual environment directory that we are going to use for our project to do that we just type virtual env dot venv dash p slash user slash bin slash python3 what this code does is it makes a hidden directory called venv because in linux beginning your directory name with a dot makes that directory hidden and the dash p is an option you pass virtual environment on what version of python you want to use in this case we want to use python3 inside slash user usr slash bin now hit enter and when it's done if you type 
ls dash la you would see that it created our project directory as expected to use it we just type source dot venv slash bin slash activate you will see our prompt has changed indicating that we are now in our isolated Python environment we just type deactivate to go back to our regular prompt and escape our isolated Python environment we can now install Django there are other ways to install Django but for simplicity we'll use pip to install the latest version of Django available from PyP or the Python package index repository to do that we just type pip install Django and hit enter to test Jan the Django installation we just start up a Python interactive interpreter by typing Python and if the installation was successful we should be able to import Django and check its version okay moving on we can now take our first step into creating our first project a project is a collection of settings for an instance of Django including database configuration Django specific options and application specific settings so let's exit our Python shell and type type Django dash admin dot pi or just Django dash admin start project then the name of our project which will just name my site for now then hit enter okay so it says that my site directory already exists um, just going to delete delete it for now and make another one so I'm just going to repeat the command Django dash admin dot pi start project my site and then hit enter what the start project command does is it creates a directory containing six files Okay, there we are. My site, which is the outer my site directory, is just a container for our project. It name doesn't matter to Django. You can rename it to anything you like. Manage that py py is a command line utility that lets you interact with this Django project in various ways. Type Python manage dot pi oh wait we just have to change into the directory first and type python manage dot py help to get a feel for what it can do okay so here are your options now you should never have to edit this file it's created in this directory purely for convenience okay so uh, let's go back to the files that were created um, oh now it has added a few more files but we'll just go over on the basic files that um, we are concerned about uh, the next uh, is the uh, inner my site directory it is the actual Python package for your project and we have our init uh, .py uh, it's an empty file required for Python to treat the my site directory as a package example a group of Python modules and we also have our settings.py 
which is the settings configuration for this Django project. Take a look at it to get an idea of the types of settings available along with their default values. Okay, so we'll just skip that for now. And we have our urls.py. The urls.py for this Django project is the table of contents of your Django powered site. Next is we have our wsgi.py, an entry point for WSGI compatible web servers to serve your project. And lastly, we have our asgi.py as well as WSGI. Django also supports deploying on ASGI, which is the emerging Python standard for asynchronous web servers and applications. Now to see our barebone application in action, let's run the server by changing into the directory of our project, cd my site, and type the command um, dot slash manage dot pi run server. The run server launches the built in Django development server which is a lightweight web server that we can use while developing our site. We will receive a uh, warning message in red telling us we have unapplied migrations. Well, just We will just ignore that for now, okay? Now if we open up our browser and go to http colon slash slash 127.0 dot zero dot one colon eight thousand which is the IP address that stands for home on port eight thousand and if everything goes well then we'll see that it works by default the run server command starts the development server on port eight thousand listening only for local connections if you want to change the server port, pass it a command line argument like so okay, so let's just uh, control C and run our command again run server and we want to run it on port 8080 so that's how you change the port Okay, so now we will access it here on port 8080. If you want other computers on your local network to be able to view your Django site by visiting your IP address in their web browsers, then you type uh, manage that slash manage dot pi run server 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 colon 8000 well that's all we have for now in this tutorial if you have any questions or comments please post it in the comments section below down below and I'll do my best to answer them if you enjoy the video please hit the like button and kindly support my channel by subscribing Again, my name is Ryan, and you are watching Recurse TV. See you next time.